Hello and welcome to South Lakes High School where it's time for the Baron Cameron Bowl. The matchup always heated between the Herndon Hornets and the homestanding South Lakes Seahawks. I'm Jeremy Huber, joined by my partner Brian Gardner in the booth. Marissa Pillow will be with us on the sidelines tonight. Brian, you have a game tonight where these teams, they just don't like each other and it is such a big deal if they can get a win against each other. Yeah, absolutely. We're talking about a proximity rivalry right here. These are guys who grew up playing with each other and playing against each other. When you got schools that are this close to each other, every time they play, it's fireworks because, man, do they want to beat each other. Now, we've got some very good players in this matchup tonight, two teams that really want to win and some key players in this contest. Start things off on the Herndon side of things. Lameek Bumbry, the running back, has had some very good games so far this season. Yeah, absolutely. 174 yards thus far in two games, a couple of touchdowns. He is the thunder to the lightning of Darius Hicks. They got a power back, that being Bumbry. Hicks is the guy who looked for the big play. More of a classic power back, like I said, two touchdown score. Look for him around goal line carries. Someone who's gonna run inside the tackles and be very hard to bring down. On the other side of things for South Lakes, their player to watch, a guy that's a little more with the speed and the quickness, but he's still a great one. Kyrie Denny really has been the scoring machine so far for this South Lakes offense. Yeah, absolutely. South Lakes struggled a little bit offensively so far, one and one team. They have three touchdowns, all three scored by their senior tailback, Kyrie Denny. He can catch the ball, he can take the handoff, and man, can he run away from you. This guy is a pretty good ball player. Now, going off to our coaches today, two guys who have been on their programs trying to get things going in both programs. Our Marissa Pilla, she was able to go ahead and catch up with the head coach of the Herndon Hornets, Brian Day, earlier. Hi, I'm Marissa here with Coach Day of the Hornets. Coach, you've been off to a difficult season right now, so what's the game plan for tonight? Right now, we're just trying to be a little more consistent offensively. Our, our defense have been playing lights out, and uh, we just want to make sure we're putting our defense in a good spot every possession, and uh, we need just to be a little more consistent offensively moving the ball. Uh, we want to win the first down battle and uh, make sure we have no turnovers. That's the biggest thing. Thanks, Coach. And also, this is a huge matchup against Seth Lakes. So what does this rivalry mean for your team? Well, the first thing it means is that um, we get to play in a big game, and that's, that's something special for any kid. I just think high school football is special, and when you get to have those type of rivalry games, it, it means a lot to the kids. It means something to these two communities, um, and I just think it's an awesome experience for kids. Um, if, you, if you don't ever played in a big game, then usually your team hasn't really you know, made the playoffs or done something like that, and I think it's kind of a neat thing where – both teams haven't made the playoff maybe in the past couple years, but this is something special in this community. I think for us, as we're trying to build our program, this we want them to experience these type of big games because I can tell you, playing in the playoffs here in Northern Virginia, it's a big deal, and we'd like to be able to be one of those teams consistently making the playoffs. So it's a good experience and a learning lesson for us. So. All right, Coach, thank you. Good luck tonight. Thanks for having us, guys. I appreciate being here. And you can tell, folks, a lot of excitement ready for this one. Of course, South Lakes at home today. They're in the blue jerseys. On the other side of things, you've got Herndon in that Ohio State look, as you can see at home. Getting ready to kick things off for South Lakes. Their kicker, Matt Kearns, back deep for the Herndon Hornets. It's going to be their dynamic duo of Lameek Bunbury. Also, Darius Hicks back deep looking to break a big one as we are underway tonight in Reston. Squib kick can be taken by one of the up backs, 35 yard line, a little bit of a seam there falling forward, and it'll be good position to start off for Herndon as they will kick first at their 41 yard line. Short field on the squib kick, really backfiring there on the Seahawks. Instead of getting it up in the air, well, they keep it away from the Thunder and Lightning duo, but what they do also is give them a shorter field to work with, which is more like 60 yards than 80. Gotta like that if you're Herndon. Charles Benerick, the one to recover that squib kick and doing a good job of just getting it up the field and able to go ahead and get some positive yardage and get his team off in a good starting position. So the ball just actually outside the 40, just short of the 41-yard line. Quarterback Ryan McLaughlin brings him out, single back behind him, two receivers to his right. Handoff up the middle. It's Bumbry off left tackle. He's going to press forward, get about three yards on the game. And that's what we talked about pregame there. Lameek Bumbry, a power guy, a guy who's going to run between the tackles. He's going to get more carries than Hicks will, who also plays on the outside sometimes, come in on the, one of the, some of those jet sweep type handoffs. But Bumbry is someone who's tough to bring down in between the tackles and nicely done 
by South Lakes there, dragging him down on the first play. And Brian, it sounds like he's kind of an X factor, Hicks, where you know Bumbry's the steady guy. Absolutely. In the first game when they lost to Westfield, Hicks was shut down, never got out in space, never got going. But in their victory in this game, he he was averaging over 10 yards a carry. Now Bumbry going to his right, and he will be swallowed up as the defense of South Lakes swarmed to get the stop just about a half a yard gain. Yeah, and this is something that South Lakes, it's kind of an X factor for them on the defensive side if they can stop that running game. Because when they lost that game to Westfield, they gave up 350 yards rushing in that game. Averaging seven yards a carry. They did not put them in a lot of third and long type situations, which we're seeing Herndon in right now. So you make a young quarterback go out there and make a play in the high school level, that's always tough. McLaughlin, the junior, comes out. Going to have to get about six yards for the first down. Needs to take it across the 50-yard line. And a jump by South Lakes up on the front. That's going to get Herndon about five yards. Likely won't get them the first down. It'll make it a lot easier. A big mistake, maybe an adrenaline mistake there. You see, we talked about the proximity rivalry here. Herndon's got their fans out. South Lakes always got their fans out here at home. They've got the adrenaline's pumping. They're antsy. They want to go hit somebody but they can't do it until the whistle's blown. It's like John Mangle was the guy to jump offside, so it makes it a lot more manageable for Herndon. We'll see what they come out in as they will look to go ahead and get this first down and keep things going. We talked a little bit about it uh, before the game that Herndon has had some trouble this year with slow starts, have had some pretty good middles of games and then not able to finish at the end. Under center will be McLaughlin, Bumbry behind him, two receivers left, one to the right, and it'll be sneak up the middle, and it'll be close, but a second effort gets McLaughlin about a gain of one, one and a half, and it'll be more than enough for the first down. Nicely done by the junior quarterback. He kept those legs moving, turned into a running back a little bit there. If you're the quarterback go plowing right up the middle, you got to have a running back's mentality. You know you're going to get hit. You're not running away from people. You're just trying to get a surge and follow your offensive line for that first down, which they did. And if you're going to have a guy to run a quarterback sneak, you can't find better than McLaughlin. He's got some very good numbers, 5'11 and 205, very stocky and seemingly powerful. We talked about the running back mentality. He's got a running back's legs. This guy, powerful frame, and look to see that on some of those short yard situations. McLaughlin checks the defense, has three receivers to his right. He'll look for the quick pass. The left-hander has it knocked down at the line of scrimmage and getting up high, Ethan Clark to smack that one back into space. Oh, man, he came off the edge, and Ethan Clark, he's also a tight end, starting at the right end, defensive end there. Long, long frame. He's six foot five, and it's tough for the lefty to get that one over him. Yeah, not the tallest quarterback back there, so Clark had the advantage, and I'm sure that Coach Wooten telling his defensive front, get those hands up, and you know, for Clark, it's got to be like a guy rejecting a shot in basketball. Yeah, absolutely, and you look at this really once you get to the higher levels in college football or professional football, the taller quarterbacks are generally the ones who are the classic style because they can see over the line. They don't have to look for holes in the line, which a guy like McLaughlin might have to do. Wilson in at fullback now for the Hornets as they go with the eye formation, rolling out to his light, McLaughlin looking for the pass. That one's going to be incomplete. The one-handed catch attempted by Connor Johnson, but couldn't haul it in. Would have been Johnson's fourth catch on the season. He was out in space to throw a little bit high for him. Another big guy cut his hand on it, but you hear receivers say a lot of times if they get their hands on it, they should catch it. You're not going to blame Johnson on that one, though. Johnson has some good size out there as well. Really, you look at some targets for Herndon. Johnson also M have some good size. We'll see if they can use that throughout the game. You know, Jeremy, you mentioned a few plays ago about how Herndon, the way they've played so far this year, they've lost two games by a total of four points, two points each. But they've played what I'm calling incomplete football games, where they get off to a slow start, pick it up, and then blow the lead in the fourth quarter. They've blown a nine-point lead and a one-point lead in late in the fourth quarter in both of their losses. Pistol formation for the Hornets. McLaughlin back to pass, going to have to scramble. Flag is down, and he'll be thrown to the ground and hit hard, and we'll see what this is. But it, if it is against Herndon, it will not be a first down. They'll be in a punting situation. Well, the flag down kind of in that area that could be an offside. We've already seen one of them. We're going to say a sideline warning. I believe no violation. So this should be, yeah, it'll be a warning. So it won't affect the play. They won't get any yardage out of it. The next one will go against the Seahawks. This means a punting situation now for Herndon as they're stopped. That's interesting. You throw the flag down there, actually make a call, but it's just a warning. Don't see that too often. Chris Wilson back to punt for Herndon, going back deep for South Lakes. 
will be Akram Gabil, and that'll be a shank looking for the coffin corner, not finding it. It'll roll out just past the 30-yard line, so not bad field position for South Lakes as they will start for the first time, first and 10. Yeah, we'll get a look for the first time at this South Lakes offense led by Seth Ravenstall, and of course, key of that offense, Kyrie Denny, the tailback. In quick conversations before the game with the coaching staff of South Lakes, they admitted, hey, you know, we're a team that we like to go ahead and spread it out, let our athletes see what they can do. And you'll see the four wide receiver sets. You'll see getting guys out in space. RJ Lee will kick things off in the backfield for South Lakes. A little more conventional formation here. A tight end just off the line of scrimmage and receivers each way for Ravenstall, the sophomore. Caught an offset to the right. Hand off, Lee looks to bounce it. And he'll be taken down, maybe gets a yard on the play. Actually, that may be generous. All right, no gain. Nice coverage there by the Herndon front seven. A tough front seven, really the strength of their defense. Interesting to see Denny start on the sideline. Not much there for RG Lee, John Murphy on the tackle. So second. Call it nine, no huddle for South Lakes, keeping the tempo going, same formation. Quick screen out, that one's gonna hit the ground. Will they say it's a catch? <laughs> Referee still, they finally say no catch as the diving attempt was made, couldn't be hauled in. I'll tell you what, it's loud here today, Jeremy. I'm not sure if maybe they, someone blew a whistle just softer without really any emphasis from the official on the sideline there, but didn't hear anything from up here until after he started to move. Now Denny into the game. Johnson, the last one to drop that pass. Again, the eye formation. Ravenstall back to pass, looking over the middle, nothing there. Flag is down. He will roll and try to get something out of the play, and he'll be brought down out two flags. So this will be penalized a good bit. Could have been one at the end, some extracurriculars. He'll be well short of the first down, barely gets it back to the line of scrimmage and a hold on the play, and it may have been two holds because I know at one point it seemed like there was one action thrown, then another one a couple seconds later. Yeah, definitely the flags came with a little bit of space in between them. One, I think, very at the very beginning of the play and one after Ravenstall started to scramble a little bit there, and I would not be surprised if we see a ton of yellow flags on this turf today because we mentioned these teams, these are guys who really want to beat each other, and they're a little bit maybe too fired up up early in the game before they get in the flow the adrenaline's going and it's tough to control that for you know a 16 17 18 year old guy yeah this rivalry has gone back so far really back to 1980 the first two times these two teams played the one school south lakes coming off of herndon who's been around forever so this really